afternoon. How are we all doing? Are you ready to end homelessness? Okay, perfect. I'm in the right place then. <laughs> so as you just heard, housing is what ends homelessness. And we do not have enough housing here in our community. That's probably not a shock to you. Um, and so I just want to kind of take a few minutes to set up the conversation that we're going to have today. Um, I've got some amazing friends and colleagues of mine, and we're going to kind of dive into some things that have happened recently in Orange County and how things went a little sideways in trying to bring a couple of projects online. And so I'm just going to kind of give you the background, make sure that we all know what permanent supportive housing is, because we can't talk about it if we don't know what it is. So there's two big conversations that are happening here in Orange County when it comes to homelessness. One of those is around emergency shelters, and one of those is about permanent supportive housing. So emergency shelters, a lot of that conversation is because of the federal lawsuit that we've been in. And so I want to just take a moment to address that. We're going to pause here and say the focus of the lawsuit has been around emergency shelter. An emergency shelter is needed in our community, but it will not end homelessness. Okay, does that make sense? It's somewhere where people can go tonight, which is great, and we need it because we don't have enough emergency shelter beds. But if there isn't somewhere for somebody to move on to and out of the emergency shelter, their homelessness can't end. And when somebody is chronically homeless, so that means they have a diagnosed disability, and they've been homeless for over 12 months or longer, the solution for that person is permanent supportive housing. So when we talk about permanent supportive housing and the people that would live in permanent supportive housing, we are talking about people that are highly vulnerable. We are talking about people with complicated health issues. We are talking about people that cycle in and out of the ER. We're talking about people that are likely to pass away on our streets if we don't have an alternative for them. And I don't know if you know, but last year alone, we had 235 people passed away while they were homeless here in Orange County. These are the kind of people that needed permanent supportive housing. This is a matter of life and death in our community for those people who have those complicated health needs. So this is real, this is serious, but the good news is that permanent supportive housing is the proven solution for chronic homelessness. It is a national best practice, it is what HUD funds, and they fund it because they have a return on investment. Our federal government doesn't like to spend money on things that don't work most of the time. Um, <laughs> homelessness has got a lot of data from all around the country that shows that it is cheaper um, to address homelessness by providing permanent supportive housing. And I do want to give Dr. Snow a shout out because he's over there. <laughs> and Dr. Snow and Dr. Goldberg and their work on the cost study changed the conversation around homelessness here in Orange County. So not only is it the most cost effective thing we can do to address homelessness, um, particularly chronic homelessness, it is also, I would argue, the morally right thing to do. It is the dignified thing to do. So what happens in our cities when permanent supportive housing comes up? What do you think? <laughs> yes. There's a lot of fear around what permanent supportive housing is. There is a lot of confusion, especially with all the conversations about emergency shelters. So people get confused. They just hear homeless shelter, housing, and they don't understand the differences between an emergency shelter and between housing. And they are very, very different. We need both, but they serve different purposes. And I just want to give you a stat, because I have you here, and I love stats and data. Um, and so we, uh, we heard recently a group of us, um, a guy named Ian De Jong, I always pronounce his name wrong, but he's the guy that invented the VI Spadat. And if you know what the VI Spadat is, then you know that he's a big deal. Um, and you can just trust me on that one. Um, so he works with the National Alliance to End Homelessness, the United States Intercouncil Agency on Homelessness. He's globally looked to as a leader in homelessness and data. And we heard him say that for every one bed of emergency shelter that you have in your community, you have to have six exit routes for your system to function well. And three of those should be permanent supportive housing. So when you hear these conversations from the lawsuit around emergency shelter, and we need to put 50 beds here, 
and 50 beds in this city and 100 beds over here, I want you to remember his statistic. That's great, we need those beds. But where are the three beds of permanent, not beds, where are the three units of permanent supportive housing going to come from so that can function well? Because we at United to End Homelessness, we're keeping our eyes on the long, the long term goal. Emergency shelter important, permanent supportive housing crucial. We can't end homelessness without it. And I know you guys have heard from the Association of California Cities, so I know that most people in the room know that there is a plan to build 2,700 new units of permanent supportive housing in our community. And that has had um, phenomenal support from city managers, elected leaders, and so there are a lot of people that are behind this plan, including members of the Board of Supervisors. So the basic idea, I'll boil it down really quickly, is that 2,700 units, it was the unsheltered count from the 2017 point in time count, if you're wondering how the number was picked, that's what we need to help get us kind of out of the hole of homelessness that we're in right now. So they took that number, they looked at every single city across the county, and they said, what would be a fair portion? And I'm gonna make these numbers up. These are not real, don't quote me on them, okay? So if they said Newport Beach has 20% of Orange County's overall population, we're gonna assign 20% of the 2,700 units to Newport Beach. You with me? So they did that for all 34 cities and they presented it to them and they said, this would be your number for permanent supportive housing units to build in your community. And if we all do it together, then it's fair. No one city is bearing the burden, no one city is gonna be left out, we're all gonna participate. And so a lot of cities have said, yes, they will do it, but obviously there's a lot of fear surrounding that. Um, there's a lot of unknown, and we just had an election, so we've got new leaders, and so it's gonna be an interesting time here in Orange County. And um, another part of that was the Orange County Housing Finance Trust. It was a piece of legislation called AB 448, it had bipartisan support, and it was created to build a housing trust here in Orange County so we could gain new money to be able to make those supportive housing units real. So we could gather new funds, we'd be able to compete um, more competitively on a national level, and we'd be able to close the gap on those developments in a much faster way. And that passed, that's gone into law, and so that is now in the formation process um, under the guidance of the Association of California Cities, Orange County, and their city managers task force group. So I want you to know that those things have happened, and they are positive and they are good, and we are at a groundbreaking time here in Orange County where there is so much potential for us to do this. But the hurdle that we face is that elected leaders need to make bold decisions. And that's hard when you're an elected leader. So what do you need when you're an elected leader to make a bold decision? You need to know people have your back. And that is where we see the faith community and the wider community really coming up and helping us change the course of homelessness in Orange County. And so that is the conversation we're having today is how do we mobilize well? How do we mobilize in a way that is effective to make sure that when these developments come into the public arena, that we are ready and that we can give elected leaders that coverage that they need. So I'm thrilled to be able to sort of pass this on. Am I bringing back Marsha? Yes, I'm bringing back Marsha. So you're gonna hear some conversations around how the faith community has mobilized in a way that was really successful and how they did that. And then you're gonna hear a little bit of some of the challenges that were faced in two of our cities. And then we're gonna spend time talking about what is our response um, as members of the faith community. So thank you. Thank you very much.